Well, welcome to the Sand Garden. You've picked one of our food forest videos. This one is entitled Two Good Nasty Plants. And it's one in which the incredible permaculture duel of Malia Groom and Jordan Hasia of Incredible Edibles talks about cattails and arundo. This horribly invasive plant that the California Wildlife and Conservation Service and everybody else is really eradicating because it's terribly invasive, can't be found used for anything, has built our house and provided us with view set and all sorts of wildlife habitat. And transpiration in the summertime helps cool the place and I don't know what all. Uh, but then Jordan here was telling me it might be used for a couple other things we were thinking of. There's a lead in for you, Jordan. Yeah, we were thinking about using it for structural parts for the trellis. Um, what else? Possibly some living fence, some kind of hedge stuff to keep the chickens out of the garden. Um, we've used it for teepee poles and gardens to grow beans and peas up create an extended level kind of in the garden. Uh, what else? Whoa, you could probably say something from the uh, background. Did you say bean poles already? Yeah, bean poles. Well, in this case, it's not just the structural beams of the trellis, the entire trellis might be made out of it to exactly. support. That's what we're, we're saying is going to be uh, Supporting grapes, kiwis, <laughs> chocolate vine, passion flower vine. You can make blue down. Hey, whoa, well, hide you your face and I'll come over and look at this zone. Yeah. Our, our brother Sean created a flute out of it. Oh, yeah, that wasn't the first flute that's been created here. <laughs> and actually, I created the house. All the laughing that holds the whole house together before it was mudded was made out of this terrible invasive creature, a rundo. <laughs> Richard, yes, is going to tell us about the uh, cattails. Well, I'm going to tell you about one thing about the cattail. And I didn't even want to tell you this thing because it wasn't my thing, it was your thing. <laughs> but we were talking about the rundo earlier, and now we got talking about how many uses of cattails. And so the last conversation was, in trying to protect all of our adobe around here, Jordan says, oh yeah, you take cacti, the pad cacti, right enough to tell it and, and harvest the fluff from a cattail just about at this stage. And that produces a fiber that seals it. So now I'm going to go over and take the camera and see if Jordan can think of a use for cattail. So, use that I uh, came up with uh, reminded me when I was a teen, young teenager, like 13, 14, I used to take these cattails off and we'd soak them in uh, gasoline overnight and then you'd have them, we'd take them down to the beach campfires down at night and they'd be torches for maybe 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, and you could actually stick them in the ground 15 feet apart and you'd have torches that would light up the whole area. So you could, you never know, you could use them for uh, caves, uh, exploring caves, or uh, Woe says dipping them in beeswax and then having them like a candle, I believe. And for, you, can, you can do um, sap from a tree. Sap from a tree or a pine tree. No, I've never tried that one. If you guys, I haven't tried. You heat it up and just drip it on. You know, you, you take pitch and white pitch yeah. all over it, and then light it on fire. Yep. But you, but you have to heat it, right? You put it on. Melt it. Yeah, you got to melt it in there. Yeah. And then dip it. Exactly. Yeah, and dip it. Let last for hours. Yeah. Huh? Nice one. Nice one. Oh, you're doing so good. What else you got? Um, you could use it as a spear. 
No, <laughs> not strong enough. But since you're doing a good job, I'm doing. We used to use them very much as you did for torches as arrows. As arrows. Yeah, you have to knock them. You have to uh, fit the end with some kind of a cap in order to oh, make wow. it work. But you know, shoot the shoot the whole thing. Yeah, to get a wow. flame and you got flame and arrow wow. arrow time. Yeah. Same idea. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't have to soak them overnight. You just kind of dip them in some kerosene or something and shoot them. <laughs> then you can, I, I guess, you could also take a bunch of this and then mix it up in your hand and just blow it. And make a wish. Is another yeah. one we did as a kid. Kind of same thing with dandelions. Huh. Well, okay. You uh, let me give you a couple. All right. So you're staying up here, and you were talking about how when you were a child you make a wish. One of the things when I was a kid, we were so hungry that we would really be walking around wishing we could find something to eat. <laughs> and when you encountered this plant, you were really happy. You were not quite so happy this time of year. I'll tell you why in a minute. But most other times of the year, actually within a month or so, you get these great little shoots, and I haven't looked yet. I think it's a little early. You kind of come up with a small spear. They'll be here soon, and they are delectable. <laughs> you just chew that, and they just crunch through, and you just eat them as is, unless you're flaky because this is a gray water system. But that's one of the really good edibles about this plant. If you get in trouble, it's kind of a lot of work, depends on how hard they are to root out. But if you're really hungry, the roots have a lot of starch in them. They're not like a potato like you may have heard before, but you can get sections of, of root, and you probably want to roast them or something. And they have a very high starch con, kind of a neutral flavor, but huh, if you're hungry, you're glad you found it. Um, let's see, in the food department, this plant, when the tails are young, when they are first flowered, early tight sight stages can be used essentially as paint. They're soft, mixable, edible wow. mixture, and you can paste that out. And I don't know, we used to add them to bread dough, but I, you know, and in a pinch you just eat them. They're good. <laughs> so, you know, this, this swamp creature that is in our wetlands, blows that fluff through. Actually, he's kind of a nice person to have around. I guess since I got the camera, you can see she weaves pretty easy. She's got these modestly strong stems. So we've talked about creating arrows and so forth. But you could, for example, create the foundation for a mud and water wall mm -hmm. with them. However, in our mud and water wall we're going to be talking about, we'll probably use the arena. But that's because not just by chance they happen to live here. You know, we were kind of incredible edibles waiting to really have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess the moral to that story is look twice before you call something a nasty plant. I do want to put in a warning, however. A rundo will really run away uh, if it's got wet roots. <laughs> so if you've got damn soil or something, do not plant it. Um, in our case, it has a major, major function, and that is to filter uh, our gray water. It does so along with the cattails and other uh, native grasses. That entire system is contained uh, in a trough that the roots can't penetrate. So, um, you know, we can kind of play uh, master here, and if it gets too rambunctious, shut off the water. But I doubt if you can.